Welcome to Dr. Sister Talks, and I'm gonna talk about this. Good news! On the blaze from the blaze, President Trump says that remaining US troops in Afghanistan should be home by Christmas, marking the end of a nearly 20 year war. The war in Afghanistan has gone on for so long that some US troops have watched their children deployed to the same fight. This is absolutely great news. Uh, as according to the debate yesterday about the VIP, uh, my video and my comment and, and opinion on it was a bit off, uh, wasn't up on my own game. Uh, I didn't take notes and I kind of zoned out on a bit on the debate, especially when Kamala was talking, because a lot of what she said was fake news. But one of the things that did stand out on me is that how she would handle the, or she and and Biden on it would handle that crisis. <clears throat> she even mentioned that Russia was paying, uh, um, what's, what's the word? Uh, bounty. There you go. <laughs> you escaped me. And uh, paying bounty on American troops. Apparently, the intel on it is kind of iffy, uh, not quite there yet. So, the best alternative would be hey, let's pull the troops out and then figure out the response. But instead she went on and on and on about other things. About it, 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 it makes no sense. And then Jim, the, according to her um, or Biden, we would uh, America would have led another war, another endless war, especially on Iran. That almost felt like uh, John Bolton talking point. It, it almost felt like um, she was quoting Bolton on that. Uh, in regards to Iran, but either way, let's keep on going. On Thursday, President Trump announced that he uh, that the remaining U.S. troops in Afghanistan, which peaked 100,000 under the Obama administration, but has since been reduced to under 8,600 during Trump's administration, should be home by Christmas. Trump touted the news on Twitter, saying we should have the small remaining number of all brave men and women serving in Afghanistan by. Christmas, the withdrawal in the immediate result. The <laughs> God damn it, English. The withdrawal is the immediate result of a historic agreement between the U.S. and Afghanistan, struck in February, in which the U.S. offered to withdraw all troops from the country by May 2021, in exchange for counterterrorism guarantees from the Taliban. The president has has been outspoken during his presidency about the need to end the America's endless wars and has taken major steps to withdraw US troops from areas such as Afghanistan and Iraq. The total military withdrawal from Afghanistan would be a major achievement for the president, though it should be noted that Trump's tweet appears, appears to be at odds with the statement made hours earlier by his national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, who said that the numbers of troops will be reduced to 2,500 by New Year. Obviously, there's... It says that, and it's kind of at odds, obviously, uh, I agree, it would be at odds, but it should be, uh, I think it's, um, Trump talks a lot about in hyperboles, and sure, uh, I have no problems with that, even Obama did it, <clears throat> but even if it decreases a bit to that number 2500 and i agree maybe it should leave some to guarantee that some of the the taliban respects the agreement or that he guarantees that there is a supervision that that the troops the afghani afghani troop is actually respecting or at least following protocol or the training they are following the training they received or that they are not as um, uh, not they are not doing anything wrong well, but even then that's a massive number of the that's a massive massive number being decreased and only reduced to 2500 that's that's trump change in comparison to what it was back in back in those days uh, in comparison to 8000 and that's just a tiny little fraction and that's amazing that's the end of a lot of of endless death i'm the firm believer that a country or a group of people who is not thankful for the sacrifices that the american people has done doesn't deserve any more uh sacrifice from americans 
look, uh, I I don't think so. I don't think it it should be. Uh, Americans should waste their lives on on a group of people who are ungrateful for for their sacrifice. I, I don't think I don't think they should. I, I'm endlessly thankful for for American lives who kept the world safer and safe for what. Uh, in fact, I'm even gonna go on uh, record that America has made the world safer. We have experienced uh, a number of peace, and despite having smaller conflicts, we have experienced um, a type of peace we haven't seen in millennia. In fact, it's that's because of America. That's that. Thankfully, for the American sacrifice. Thankfully. Uh, it's do all of that it's due to the American sacrifice in keeping the world peace. We haven't had uh, that amount of peace in millennia. And and despite the smaller conflicts like we see today even in Armenia and Azerbaijan and things like that. Despite all that, that's still a tiny fraction of what would have happened if America wasn't here. We would have had probably another world war by now. Or, um, I don't know, a war of epic proportions, like, like I said, World War. Or um, a bigger war, but not quite World War level big. Maybe um, uh, something like we saw uh, during the Nap uh, Napoleonic Wars and things like that. But, but we didn't. Anyway, let's get back to the news. It was 19 years ago, in the aftermath of the September 11, 2001, uh, 20, not 2011, Jesus Christ, why was I thinking 2011? Don't ask. My brain sometimes is a mush, and today, particularly today, is mushy. I have no, re no idea why. I'm definitely off my game today. Even my opinion about the debates have been a bit off. I don't know. Is it the coffee? Is it not enough caffeine? My brain... Maybe my brain is not warm today. My, did my brain get fucked in my sleep? Or by lack of sleep? No? Uh, maybe, maybe it's lack of coffee. Let me drink the rest of it. Uh. Maybe maybe that's what I need to to kickstart my brain. And then again, I do have uh, an excuse for it. I'm a little bit retarded, so at, at least that's a good excuse. Maybe it needs um, maybe it needs the the, the usual shakedown. No, hmm. I wonder what it is. Come on, Brain, come on. I need you. I need you to work today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I probably need a cattle prod to get this thing working. Maybe I need some electric impulses. In fact, I think I have the, the thing right here. No. No. It's not here. It's one of those electric pans. You press it, hey, it's a prank pans. You press it, and you get an electric shock. It was great back in the college days. People would ask me, "Do you have a pen to uh, to borrow? For I can borrow." Yes, here, take it. And uh, and they would press it. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I'll get a cockle. <laughs> Obviously, they, later on they will get the joke, I'll, I'll lend them the actual pen that would actually work. <laughs> oh god, I was an asshole. Ah, but I was a good asshole. I'm still a big fucking large bug hole. But still, it was actually fun. Mm. I miss those days. Anyway, back to the article, I digressed way too much. According to the Saturday report from Stars and Stripes that puts the length of the US conflict in Afghanistan in perspective, some of the same troops have watched as their sons and daughters deployed uh, to the same fight. When we started this, people asked why I was going, and my response was, so my sons don't have to fight this war. Master Sergeant Trevor DeBoer, 
To the military news outlet this week, the Boer has been deployed to the Afghanistan three times with the 20th Special Forces Group since 2002, the outlet reported. Despite his wishes, nearly two decades, la uh, decades later on, his son, Specialist Peyton Sluss, was deployed to Afghanistan to fight on the same ground. My feet were walking the same land you were, Sloss reported told his father in a joint phone interview, referring to the forward operating base 20 near the city of Jalalabad. Michael Kruger, Kruger? Did I say the name it right? A former army sergeant fought in Pet 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 Patch Valley in 2010. Eight years later, his son Trenton was deployed to Afghanistan to serve in the 2nd Infantry Brigade Combat Team 4th Infantry Division, just like his father. Kruger told Stars and Tribes recently that he just hopes his grandson won't have to be deployed to Afghanistan to fight the same battles for the same reasons. I agree. The, enough, enough sacrifice, enough, enough wasting American lives, which in my view, in my view, are valuable because they have brought a lot of peace, a lot of change to the world for the good. They have brought a lot of technology, science, and, and for the better. So for me, the American life is a whole lot more valuable than even my own life in that case. That it is. Look, the people of my country or my own life, I haven't given the same amount of stuff that um, an, an average American has has given to the world. So, yes. And in my view, I, uh, the American life it shouldn't be wasted. Like I said, it shouldn't be wasted on ungrateful people. Look, enough, enough. They, uh, enough, I think that, I think that's the best. Uh, I was thinking here, going on on a speech about the, all the, of all the things, but, one word is enough to describe it, to describe exactly what I'm feeling. Enough, enough. Don't waste any more on this. It's, it's not worth it. Uh, the Mav, Maval Wallace, a father and son who shared his uh, the first name, Bajun, had the unique experience, experience, the unique experience in. Okay, this is bad English. It should be unique experience of serving together in Afghanistan at the same time, and even met up in 2012 while serving. The Maval Wallace are not alone either. Fox News reported last year about the commander saying, uh, "Command, no, command about Command Sergeant Major Michael Kirby and his son, Specialist Kyle Kirby, who were deployed together in February 2019 to join more than 150 of the soldiers serving in Afghanistan as part of Operation Spartan Shield." This is my fifth deployment, it's his first, and we are fortunate to be in the same unit now. So I know mom's pretty excited about that, Michael Kirby said at the time. I think it should give um, <clears throat> the son some sort of uh, comfort zone that his father is together with him, and we all worship our fathers in some sort of way, we all think they are our heroes, and I think the same thing about my father, I think he's my hero. And I think it, the same thing uh, can be said about the uh, uh, specialist Carl Kirby and his father, Michael Kirby. I think it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I think it's an order for him. <laughs> but I don't think we, they should be going to, and fighting the same one. It's an endless war that should have ended long and long ago. And uh, they should have gone and declared full war in the beginning because America hasn't declared a uh, formal full war since uh, since World War II. And a lot of those, those conflicts that keep on dragging on and on and on, it's because of how it is handled. It should have declared, look, we are declaring full war. We are going to go on with full assets, go in, get our objective, train these people the way they should be, get everything bomb everything that she did that should be bombed uh to the rubble kill all those terrorists look done enough just train it and that way there's less and less deaths on both sides because it won't be dragging on and on and on and on eat a small group here and let them group there and then when they regroup they come and attack then there's people you need reinforcements, then you get another group of, of soldiers here, then you go on, go on a counter-attack, but <clears throat> you can't use certain equipment because of certain laws and regulations, because it's not a full-on war, so you can't use 
this amount of uh, uh, this amount of over airplanes you cannot have this air cover here because of this and that so you get an amount of casualties and then you get back then you fight on and then the enemy gets to regroup um, they suffer losses but you're not allowed to finish their numbers so the enemy then go on and regroups uh, it keeps on going on 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 and it keeps on dragging for what nearly 20 years that's just it's just an endless waste of life just go on rip the bandit out all together and finish personally personally i don't want any more wars but if you are going to do it, at least go on and rip the mandate out for them all at once. Just get on with the pain, in the initial pain, the suffering, and then be done with it. Instead of dragging on and on and on for 20 years, for nearly 20 years. It's just absurd. And you know what? Enough with wasting American lives on endless wars, on people who are unthankful, no or people who who won't appreciate the sacrifices that American people have done for their own quality, for their own lives. In fact, I'm also very thankful for what the CIA has done uh, on this country, because if it wasn't for CIA backing for help or anything like that, the shithole I'm currently at would be a much bigger and smellier shithole, because it would have been a communist shithole. So, even I am thankful for it. So, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in my next video. Good night.